I have here an electric mirror. Hello. Ooh, how do I see you? There you go. And um, I'm not entirely convinced it's motoring on all the axes. In fact, I've got two of these to look at. I thought it'd be fun to figure out if I can actually dismantle it and just have a quick look at the motors and whatnot. Lube them up, perhaps, and you know, just get them generally going. However, I've never really taken apart one of these. And they're very interesting in that the glass doesn't move. This whole mount actually moves. So I'm going to go get some tools and we'll dive in. It has a Torx thing here on the bottom. So I'm going to try to use this. Oh, there we go. <laughs> no Torx, just Phillips in that. But that's OK because you can see just off to the side of the camera, I brought my security screw set out, which does contain suitable things. Albeit with a hole in the middle, like a polo. That's fine. Let's see if that helps us get anywhere with this. So this is on a, a kind of a DIN connector. And I believe they're somewhat standard for tractors, lorries, that sort of thing. I mean, I don't really know who makes this. We'll have a look. Merc, Merc, Mecra. This is a Mecra light, apparently. Uh, Mecra mirror light. God. So I'm going to tease at it because it's got this rubber seal on the end. See if we can separate it because, oh, there we go. We basically want to get the glass out and that will do the trick for the look of it so that we can get to the gubbins. Now, I hope I'm not damaging this because these feel expensive and hard to get hold of. Not the sort of thing you want to accidentally break. So I'm just working my way round. It does feel okay, it just feels like the corners might be a bit troubling because that's going to be where they're at most under tension diagonally. You can see there, for example, that the rubber is kind of getting a rip in it and a tear. Mm. I might just warm it up a little bit first. Yes, I've broken the back of it now without damaging this seal. Ooh, gunk. We like gunk, don't we? If we didn't have gunk, we'd have nothing to clean. Now, I'm going to stick these screen pullers on here just to see if there's... Oh, <laughs> okay, that was super easy. Oh, look at that. I say, that is actually quite uh, impressive. So you've got a massive heating element on these and uh, two rather well sealed looking motors. So. I kind of think if you've ever got an issue with these, it's probably less likely to be the motors and more likely to be your, your zin connector. And if it is, you probably want to use some sort of specialist contact cleaner in there and give them a bit of a, the old plasteroo. However, I think it doesn't stop me from having a little clean out. I mean, look, there's this little furry boy in there, which I think is a spider's nest, if I'm not mistaken. So let's have a look though. This, I did I admit, I do, did have a little play of this, you know, trying to move it by hand, and I couldn't, and I can see why now. These have a massive spring they're pushing against. Look at the tension that that thing's giving. And that's why when you see a coach or something driving on the road, its mirrors aren't just flopping and slopping around. Interestingly though, if we can, oh, oh that's what I unscrewed earlier. <laughs> Um, it might be possible to look at the wire colour pairs that so we have a black and a white here and actually test these individually by just putting some current down there. So I'm going to go find some old bell wire. The wires for up and down are easy to find because the left and right was pins 5 and 1 and the up and down is 4 and 2. So I've applied my lube. Just going to put it through the range of motion now. Very nice. And you can still see it slipping on the clutch. I'll show you that in a moment, like that. And that's a good sign. You don't want to lube that, otherwise the mirror will be too loose. But I'm actually pretty happy uh, that the mirror itself is working great in terms of the motors and things like that. It's actually very clean. So really, all it does need is just a little bit of clean on this glass because there is some gunk on it and just pop it all back together. And maybe just a bit of gummy pledge, uh, like a rubber cleaner on this one. Maybe I might do that first before I put it back on, uh, just to make sure it's you know kept supple. It's nice and easy. But we'll have a look at the second one now. And just in case you've not seen it, this is what gummy pledge looks like. Gummy pledge fifth and you just pop it on and you get that nice little 
rubbery shine. Mmm, so pleasant. Hopefully this next one, whoa! <laughs> you spoke too soon. To say, hopefully this next one will go a bit simpler because we've already done the job once. And often, if I'm the first time, it could take me several hours sometimes to do a particular thing. Let's say, for example, you're rebuilding a gearbox. Admittedly, that could be a little more challenging than most things. But the next time you do it, oh my gosh, is it so much quicker. Like, unbelievably quicker. And you don't even have to have done it, you know, recently as in the same day or the same week. As long as you've just done it once, you know, that year, you'll be faster. Now this one does have a bit more gunk. Oh, I'm going to be a little bit more careful again. I've been too blasé. This is where you make a, a mess and ruin the old rubber seal. Right, so I'm going to put that aside. I mean, doing the old gummy fledge. Gummy fledge. Fledge. Um, <laughs> wasn't too taxing but you can just I'm going to leave that off camera and actually just give it a good old soak in that stuff right now where's our sticky thingies there we go Ooh. well this one looks equally as good a condition so that's fine again that contact though may be looking a little bit dicey I I this wasn't working so was, this is reported as not quite working in the vehicle but I think I'm going to check the connectors at both ends. And in my experience, if you've got problems with your electric windows, often have a look at the connector on the inside. And by that, I mean that little joystick that you use, because many a time I've seen those go faulty in all, all manner of vehicles. And it tends to be basically the same component made by one manufacturer, I think always fails on there because what happens is you open your door and rain gets in a bit of rain and I think it might work its way into that switch gear that's my that's my guess so that one worked good we're gonna do the other direction oh oh yep that's fine that was that jerking motion was me because my connections not too great so the vertical is good uh, hello I would like to see something from the horizontal. Oh. Yeah, I was getting a little bit worried there, to be honest. Right, lube, lube it all up, I think. Same process, liberally applied silicone. And that's not really gonna do much because they're in the wrong position. So we're gonna wind them the other way, if they'll go. Come on. Maybe this one really does have a dirty contact that's really giving some grief here. I might have to look into this din. It really isn't doing the job. Full disclosure, I just came back from a crazy family dinner of chicken wings, fried halloumi and chips. And it was fabulous. There was salad there, but I didn't want to spoil my uh, carnivorous appetites. It was good, right. I think it's looking all right. I didn't try this on the other one, but I think let's lube, see if we can lube this ball joint. And I'm gonna have to spray that in from the other side so it's got a chance of working its way down. It does seem to be quite well sealed though. But you never know. Worth a go, isn't it? Give it a little shake. Give it a twist, a flick of the wrist. Yeah, because actually, let's, let's be realistic, if this lube could get in this way, water could, and they'd never want that to happen. But, you never know. Let's drive it a few different ways. And what I'm going to do with this one, and probably the other one now, is leave them in a neutral position, because that would make fitting them way easier. Oh, don't like those jerky motions. But it does seem pretty typical when you've operated these in your car, don't they? Okay, right now, let's try the up and the down. Ooh, that seems a lot nicer, doesn't it? Ooh. Definitely seems like it's got a little bit 
more range of motion in one than the other, but they're probably extreme anyway in the vehicle. Yeah. Well, what can I tell you? I think this has been an interesting little project, and uh, I might have a look to see... Look, I'll tell you what. If I really wanted to do a proper job of this, I would take this out and work out how to get these little pistons out, because you could hear that they're going dig, 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 dig. And I'm sure if we look at them, we'll see signs of wear on them, like pitting. But realistically, I think if you've gone this far, and you, you've isolated the problem, so the problem isn't anything to do with this. It might be these could be a little bit corroded, but it's more likely to be the switch. Then I'd fit it all back into the vehicle and just work them, work them, work them, work them. And you might just find that after you know a week or two, they'd be fine. They'll just basically wear out those pits. And those pits are probably just there because they're just staying in one position for ages, and then little bits of corrosion on this aluminium just grow in the middle. But <laughs> frankly, I think if it's not broken, don't mess with it you will definitely make it worse. Comments down below, what have you made worse recently? As ever, thanks for watching. Well, I do have the driver out already, don't I? I'm hoping, I'm hoping I don't fix this and find a really good solution and then I'll end up having to take the other one apart again. <laughs> so I'm just going to take the motor out. because I think that might be the easiest way to get in there because I don't have a nice tool sort out any of these other bits here. I've, I'm, I'm between labs at the moment. It's a very weird scenario. Look at that. So we have the piston out now. Just give it a bit of a wipe. Oh, it's not too bad. I'm just going to zoom in see if you can see that. But it's not too bad. There's a little bit gentle scoring there. Let's see if we can see anything down here. I'm not supposing we will. Um, I'll have a look. Yeah, I mean, that looks pretty clear. That looks absolutely clear. So let's just have a little go feel that through there. I mean, there's a lot of lateral pressure on it. You can feel it binding. There's a lot of pressure on that. And it does give us an opportunity to test different lubricants. So we're putting silicone on, which I think was pretty much the safest to try. But you might find lithium would be better, but you notice that there isn't any grease on it. So there's that. I mean, it's look, it's subject to just quite a lot of side play. If anything, it might be better if these were just sleeved. So if you had a little bit of brass, basically, that you could put over that. Or, or you could machine this or 3D print something out of, uh, make it smaller and then fit a brass tube over it. That's ah, okay. It's probably as good as it's going to get. There bit of fascinating exploratory investigation for you. Enjoy. Uh. Also, there was one more thing if we're playing the what if game. If what if you try to push this manually, how does it feel? Look at that. It feels like a bloody nightmare. So stiff. That's why the poor old motors are struggling. That's absolutely rock solid. And it probably needs to be. So there. If they're jerky and jerking around, it's by design. 